All right, some guy, Harrison or something, he just commented on one of my videos. He has a Roadmaster, I think, wagon. Or maybe it's today, it doesn't matter. It's this area with the uh, the flat dash. It's not a 94 to 96. But he's wondering about the uh, radio. I think he's changing the speakers and the radio. Uh, I'll show him how to do that in a minute. How to get how to get that dash off. I think he wants to um, change the head unit. And I'm like, some of these people, it's a little tricky, you know. So some radio people might break the hell out of the dash. And then you're going to have to find a new piece and... It's just a nightmare. Hopefully I have enough light over here. This garage sucks. But this is my little ghetto um, radio power supply. It's an old computer power supply. So it converts, you know, the whatever the voltage is coming out of the wall. That can vary depending on your power company. Not by much, of course. And, uh, yeah, it spits out 12 volts. So I rigged it all 12 volts. This is the, uh, this would be like your connector that's coming into, um, going into the radio, you know, it's just going to be flapping on the dash. And then you have a radio, I mean, an antenna wire. But those are all usually the same. But it's a lot of times, if like you said, he had a Kenwood head unit. A lot of times, it's just an adapter that will plug into this wire, or this connector, because that's going to go bam, right into that radio. That's a Deflock radio, but they're all the same GM from like 80-something to, I don't know. Uh, I think the Custom Cruiser, it lacks one of these plugs though, or Roadmaster, and that year it will lack one of these, but it doesn't matter, because it plugs in anyway. But that's what you're going to get in the dash, it's going to come out, there might be a, um, an adapter harness on that, that converts this to whatever the Kenwood, uh, unit works. Or sometimes they just freaking cut the wires right there off this connector, and then they're going to, they look at the wiring diagram like this, like right here, like the, um, See like light green and dark green, that's one of the speaker wires. You can just look it up. I think the 12 the 12 volt.com has a bunch of wiring diagrams for cars and radios. And that's how I figured out which goes to what and I wired this thing up to that. And then you know I have like a main power wire. I have like a battery wire, a key on wire, one for the lights and so forth. So you just gotta figure all that out and then you can put um, your connector on. Wiring color, um, it changes on some of these. They use a different wiring color in like the Olds and the Buick, but all the uh, the pins are the same. So you got to match up the pins. Usually they're labeled, or you get a picture of the actual connector. And it's either by like letters going across or numbers. So you just got to look at that and match up. Let's say like this, so forth. Let's say like this connector right here, the light blue, was like, wait, A, B, C, maybe it was like D. So you look at D and find that. It's easy. If I figured it out, they can do it. But that's the radio, you know, has that kind of plug from the factory. But he wanted to know how to get that whole um, thing off. And I'm trying to get a brighter light. And hopefully this will work and hopefully I have enough room. You should have a, um, a dash looking like that. So what I usually do... The biggest thing with these is that the around the column is going to fight you the most because you're going to have to put your shifter all the way down to one. And the uh, I'll try to get in the driver's side. The tilt lever is going to give you a problem as well. So I usually tilt it so it's all the way down, you know, all the way down like like that. And then I remove the tilt lever, so then you have all this extra working room around here. To get that out, the shifter down on one, um, or sometimes they do that last because you're gonna have the keys in it, it's gonna be dinging. I always leave the battery connected, so that's up to you. But the shifter is gonna have to go all the way to one, and you're gonna have to remove that tilt lever, and the column is gonna have to be jumped to the bottom to get this off. And then you have a bunch of screws underneath here. You get like, I think there's like six of them one, two, three, four five, six, there's six of those that gotta go. And then you open up your glove box, 92 volts. Um, there's one over there that's hidden. See, like, that's stuff that chops can miss, and then they wind up snapping your shit, and they take it apart. There's another one um, underneath there by the parking brake. This has to come off. There's just little screws underneath there. And if you get that off, this goes off first, and then it goes on last. That little thing is this little uh, clip on over here clip on the other side 
and uh, then you just start. Yeah, no screws underneath here, just clips. I'm pretty sure there's no screws. Yeah, no screws. It's just that, this, those two screws, that, and you know, shift her down, like I said. And then you gotta start pulling on it. I usually sometimes I grab it over here. Just try to grab there's clips. There's clips over here, there's a couple of clips over here. There's nothing over here. There's but there's a lot of clips though over here. And then you just gotta start pulling on it and you'll be creaking and popping. Sometimes there's little around here that cracks out. But I wouldn't worry about it. I fixed mine like a month ago with ABS cement. I think I have a shitty video on it. Um, yeah, you can glue it together. Yeah, and basically you just pry this whole thing out and it's huge, you know. Cause you have that whole piece, this whole piece. So just put it, throw it in the back, you know. Or I put it on the dash. But just be careful if you put it on your dash. Don't pop your windshield. That's a discussion. Uh, windshield. You can't get good windshields anymore. Chinese, Chinese took over that market. And yeah, hopefully, I don't know, this helps you a little bit. That's a Deflock radio I put in here. I had the factory radio, the lights are out on it. And I did the line-in mod, which I have a crappy video of. I have to make another video, and I do it on the Impala. But yeah, this can all stay in, like the, uh, this, you just pull it out a little bit. Yeah, basically, you know, shifter, bam, and then just keep on yanking on it. And this is tricky over here. To get this out when all the screws are out you kind of have to pry and twist this but it'll go in it's basically like a puzzle and the last thing make sure that trip uh thing make be careful when you remove it and be careful when you put it on i covered that a couple times so make sure when you put it together the trip lever button is not underneath that uh bezel because it's very easy to do and uh, there's a clip over here when you take that off it gets very very close to the um the headlight switch. Yeah, I had a video of doing this, but this came out terrible. But that's all I got, and I hope it helped because the battery's going dead. But it's easy to do. First time I did it to change these bulbs it took me forever. Now it's about like 14 years old. I was just tired of sitting in the passenger seat looking at out bulbs, so I fixed it. And yeah, long time we had this thing. Yeah, this stays on, you know. Bam. Again, this clips. Make sure the clips. I do it all by hand. You just pop them. And then when you put it back together, sometimes it's tricky over here to realign these clips because there's like clips underneath here. But you just kind of push up. You just keep just keep working it, you know, and you'll get it on. When it's all flush, you know, it's all flush over here. It's all flush over there. You know, you have it on. If it sticks out a little bit, you, some of the clips are missing. But just keep playing with it. You'll get it. Don't be frustrated. And it helps to do it kind of on a warm day because the plastic's going to twist a little bit. When it's cold, it's more brittle. It can snap easy. So, that's that. I wish maybe next time I take it off, I'll make a video. But yeah, I took it off like four times in the uh, last couple of weeks or months because I had out gauge cluster bowls and radio I was playing with. So, that's that. Done. Well, if I didn't mention too, all those little screws are 7mm.